hi, welcome to Pay It Forward. Today I'd like to introduce you to the newest member of the Pay It Forward family, my little grand puppy, Cupie. She is my eldest daughter's new baby, nine week old Chihuahua, who's just joined us yesterday, so she's very new, and she's gonna help me today with this tutorial, which in celebration of Cupie's arrival, we are making a little luggage tag Chihuahua. They can be made up in any colours, of course, and if you would like to make it along with me, simply click on the link in the description below. You can download your free PDF pattern templates and then we'll all get started. So let's get started on a little Chihuahua tag today. First up, you'll need, if you have a look at your pattern templates, you'll see that you need two head pieces. These are, I've interfaced all of these. Two head pieces, two full body pieces. You'll notice that I've actually chosen a, a da slightly darker tone uh, for the main part of the body and the head, then a lighter tone to give us some, uh, some depth there. So two of those, you'll need your front legs, you'll need your chest piece, which I've made lighter again, you'll need your muzzle piece, which I've made the same colour as my little chest piece, you'll need your two eye circles, these all have fusible web. All these pieces have fusible web applied and also you'll need your two ear inserts. I'm going to be using today something I never would normally use. We generally stay away from them in the professional uh, plush industry, but these crystal eyes, crystal craft eyes, they're safety eyes usually used in uh, children's toys because they don't come adrift. They actually can look really, really good if they're used in the right way and I think today this project is going to really um, make the best of them. If you can't find these, these are 20 mil. Um, if you can't find any of these or perhaps you just don't want to use these sorts of eyes, you can substitute a nice big brown button and add a little black tiny button for the centre and you can see that that's going to give us a really good result as well. I've also provided you with a template to cut out the nose in a little piece of black felt. Alternatively, you can use a button if you have a button of the right shape, which I have, so I'll be using that one today. Just because it's a great shape, I find that uh, with this little project anyway, a square or a rectangle or an oval will work really well and give you that, that nice little look. Um, a round button looks quite silly, so I wouldn't use a round button, but if you've got one of these, then that'll be great. Also, you'll need your shanks, obviously, if you're using the craft eyes, two of those. You'll need a pair of bolt cutters, because we're gonna actually trim those shanks off once we've uh, applied them. And also, I've got a little fancy button for the embellishment around her little neck. At the end, you'll need your two body fillers in plain felt, and you'll need your two head fillers in plain felt. We're going to be sewing, doing all of our sewing, because it's a very animated style, we're going to be using a darker thread to really outline all those pieces, and I'm using an extra strong upholstery thread. You can use embroidery thread if you like. If you are, I would use two strands. Also, some clear craft glue, and that's about it. So we'll get started. We're gonna start with our body today. So we take our first full body piece. A fusible web paper has been peeled off there and you're just going to fuse that piece on with a hot iron and protective cloth. You can see that that lines up beautifully there. So that will indicate her front legs. And then straight over the top of that, you pop the little chest piece in and fuse that one on and then we'll come back and do the sewing. So my pieces, body pieces are fused on nicely now. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, on my machine, I'm gonna thread my machine up in a, in a dark brown thread and I'm going to sew a straight stitching line from right in the middle of those two feet straight up until we hit the little chest piece there. So I'm gonna go back and forth. So I'll do a double line and that's just a mark in that separation in the clearest way we can of those two little front legs. So I'm gonna do that now. There's our little line stitched in from the machine. 
And our next step, I have threaded up my needle with my extra strong upholstery thread. We're going to work a blanket applique stitch on those edges and the edges we're going to be sewing are this one just from here to the base and the same on the other side just to here and then just around this chest section here just up to the edge here so our stitches will be quite small about two to three millimeters if you haven't sewn a blanket applique stitch before have a look at my video on my other channel Lisa Pay how to sew the blanket applique or buttonhole stitch and that will show you exactly how to do that. So I'm going to work each of those edges with my brown thread. So you can see there I've done my blanket applique stitching there. So now we put our little body pieces together. So you can see with the body back I have glued on one of my body fillers I didn't mention before we need a little strip of grow grain ribbon I'm using six millimeter that's just to go in the back because that's where our loop is actually going to be put we're going to have a little split ring for hanging this little one up and so you just need a little bit of glue down the center I folded that ribbon over and we only need that ribbon to extend that little loop to extend just a little way above the back there just like that so we just press that one on and then we add our second piece and there's our second piece glued on with our little piece of ribbon nicely sandwiched in between there our next step would be to glue your body front to your body back all around the edges and press it down till it's nicely dry before we sew that up if you are going to be adding a little neck embellishment like a little collar now would be the time to sew it on before we actually glue that front on so that uh, we can hide those knots you can of course sew it on at the end but I like to hide as many knots and workings as I can so just pop your little headpiece over you can get an idea of how far down that's going to sit and that will tell you where you stitch your button on the little head does sit fairly low when it's completed you can see it will be joined by a button so I generally find that sewing your little button on just below that those little points there either side sew that one in place and we can add our little uh, string of what looks like a little necklace afterwards now you can see there that I've glued that body front now to that assembled body back and I've pressed it together all the way around and what I'm going to do and I've sewn my little button on first so that's ready we're going to attach a little thread around there to make it look like a little necklace or collar um, just before we do the blanket stitching what we're going to do now I like to leave that and let that dry and we can go ahead and start working on the head and then we'll blanket stitch the outsides of both all together so our next step is to start on our head and we need to fuse into place our little muzzle piece you see that'll just fit nicely across the bottom and it should match up across the top of the head there make sure it's nicely centered do the same with your little ear pieces in place remember that you'll need room to make that stitching around the outside and you'll find that your little eye pieces will sit in just nicely take some time to get your placement right and nice and even and make sure that you have enough room each side to do that little final blanket stitching if you have your if you are using a little piece of felt for your nose you can fuse that one on now also my face pieces are fused into place and now I'm going to work the same blanket applique stitch around the entire outside of each ear from the top of this side of the muzzle all the way down to the base there and the same on the other side and around each eye circle same size stitches just a little two to three mil and there are all my little face pattern pieces appliqued on 
Now our next step is to work our little mouth and nose. You can see there that there is where your little nose will sit. If you have used uh, a piece of felt, you would have applicated around that little nose there. So I'm just going to pop mine about there and you can see, you can probably see that I've just used a just a, a fine marker there and I have drawn in a little line, it's probably only about uh, seven, six, seven millimetres from the base of the nose down and then I've just used a little, just the edge of a little wooden disc there to mark in just a little tiny smile, that's up to you how big, how wide you make that or how curved you make that. Just make sure that when you're sewing that little top line in that you come up a little higher so that that button can just sit over it. So I'm going to sew that little over those little uh, marks there using a black, I'm going to use black because my nose is black so I'm going to use a black extra strong upholstery thread to do that. I'm going to do that with a using a stab back stitch. So I've just got a single thread, I'm going to come in not at the end, I'm going to come in from behind and it's just a linked back stitch, stab back stitch. So just tiny stitches following the marks that I've made there. And my next one will come up and link up with the previous one going back into that same hole there. can see that I will just work that stitch over those marks there and up the centre and then I'll sew my button on. So there you can see that I've got my little nose sewn on with my little mouth sewn into place as well. Our next step is to add our eyes. Now if you're using buttons, now's the time just to stitch those in place. You can off centre them slightly if you like, either way and make sure you put your little black button in the centre with black thread otherwise we're going to add our crystal eyes. Now I've just made, found the centre of each of those circles, popped my little mark there. The important thing with using these eyes is that you make sure that the hole that you make for that shank to pass through is big enough to accommodate that shank and that it won't cause any puckering, you won't have to really force it through. Once you've cut your little highlight to use I like to start perhaps with a, a little quick, up, quick unpick and then use some tiny scissors just to really snip a nice neat little hole there. So once you've done that, I'll just show you on this little sample one. It's just a matter of pushing, that's a little piece of felt there, it's a matter of pushing your eye shank through, then adding your little safety clamp disc on the back, pushing it all the way down. And then I've gone ahead and you can see I've just used my bolt cutters and I've just snipped the end of that shank off. It would normally be quite long. By doing that we still get the hold. The little eye is still going to stay in place. This isn't a child's toy anyway. And then we've removed all that bulk and we can still have a fairly two-dimensional head with no problems. So you can go ahead and add those eyes. So there you can see I've got my little crystallised, clamped into place, nicely in the centre and I've snipped off the shanks at the back. So next task is just to glue, using clear craft glue, we just glue our two head fillers nicely over the back, one over the other and that will just fill out that head and cover those little shanks. And with our head fillers in place, our final step is to glue all around the edges, all of your ears with your craft glue and over the back and then we glue that head back head piece into place, matching up all your edges, pinching them and clamping them shut and then we leave that one to dry just as we did with our body there. So there's my little head pieces all glued together. I'm just going to pop that aside to dry and I'm just going to sew in a little line just to indicate a little chain around her neck there. I've just marked in at the side where I want that to start and I've threaded my needle up with some metallic silver. I've got three strands there.
and we're going to come in at the side there where, I, where I've marked my pin. This is why we do it now because before our edges are finished I can tuck that little knot into the seam. So I just want to be able to hide that so I'll just tuck that one in, tuck that one all in there and as I sew my blanket stitch in the end we won't be able to see that. Now because I've used a shank button I can actually just go through that little shank. I don't usually like shank buttons but sometimes they're handy for this sort of thing. So back up and then I'm just going to match that one on the opposite side and you can see that what I'll be given I'll just dive back into the the side there and that gives me just that little illusion of a little necklace there. There is my little necklace line stitched in and now our last step with our sewing I've threaded up my needle again with my brown extra strong upholstery thread and I'm going to sew around the entire outside edge of the body and of the head with a blanket standard blanket stitch. If you haven't done a blanket stitch before again have a look on my other channel Lisa Pay how to sew the blanket stitch and that will show you very up close how to work that stitch. So keeping our stitches to the same size nice and close together and that will finish those edges off nicely. So there is my head all completed with the blanket stitching around it and also the body as well. So now we just attach our head to our body. Just have a look at the from the front. See how far you want that little head to sit down, quite low and just a little way above that button there. You can mark it into position if you like. It's just actually sewn on with a button straight through. So the easiest way I find to do that is to take your doubled upholstery thread, doubled length of upholstery thread and I've taken my needle and I've passed it through, taken up some of that backing fabric and come through. So I'll do it one side at a time and I will go in the correct position, I will go back through the front, come out here and back through the first hole of that button. I can then unthread that needle re-thread these ends onto my needle and follow the same passage on the opposite side and then it's just a matter of tying off those two thread ends pulling everything in nice and tight and that will give us a nice swivel button joint. And there we have the little button joint all tied off. Let's put the ring behind to hang up and she's all done. Lovely little swivel head so she can hang up anywhere even just in your room. She looks great on a bag. Just adorable. Well I hope you've enjoyed making this little luggage tag with Kippy and I today. I think I've got one tired little baby chihuahua here. Too much for her. If you did enjoy this video perhaps you could give us a thumbs up. That would be beaut. In the meantime remember to subscribe because we've got, now that we have Kippy, we're going to have a lot of tutorials lots of little dog accessories, all sorts of fun. So until then, remember to pay it forward everyone because everybody can and until next time, it's Huru from me. G'day, welcome to Pay It Forward. Today I'd like to introduce you to the newest member of the Pay It Forward family, my little grand puppy, Cupie. She is my eldest daughter's new baby, nine week old Chihuahua, who's just joined us yesterday. So she's very new and she's going to help me today with this tutorial, which in celebration of Cupie's arrival, we are making a little luggage tag Chihuahua. They can be made up in any colours, of course, and if you would like to make it along with me, simply click on the link in the description below. You can download your free PDF pattern templates and then we'll all get started. So let's get started on a little chihuahua tag today. First up you'll need, if you have a look at your pattern templates, you'll see that you need two head pieces. These are, I've interfaced all of these. Two head pieces, two full body pieces. You'll notice that I've actually chosen a, a da slightly darker tone uh, for the main part of the body and the head, then a lighter tone 
to give us some uh, some depth there and you can see that that's going to give us a really good result as well I've also provided you with a template to cut out the nose in a little piece of black felt alternatively you can use a button if you have a button of the right shape which I have so I'll be using that one today just because it's a great shape I find that uh, with this little project anyway a square or a rectangle or an oval will work really well and give you that, that nice little look um, a round button looks quite silly so I wouldn't use a round button but if you've got one of these then that'll be great also you'll need your shanks obviously if you're using the craft eyes two of those you'll need a pair of bolt cutters because we're going to actually trim those shanks off once we've uh, applied them and also I've got a little fancy button for the embellishment around her little neck at the end you'll need your two body fillers in plain felt and you'll need your two head fillers in plain felt we're going to be sewing doing all of our sewing because it's a very animated style we're going to be using a darker thread to really outline so I'm going to go back and forth so I'll do a double line and that's just to mark in that separation in the clearest way we can of those two little front legs so I'm going to do that now there's our little line stitched in from the machine and our next step I have threaded up my needle with my extra strong upholstery thread we're going to work a blanket applique stitch on those edges and the edges we're going to be sewing are this one just from here to the base and the same on the other side just to here and then just around this chest section here just up to the edge here so our stitches will be quite small about two to three millimeters if you haven't sewn a blanket applique stitch before have a look at my video on my other channel Lisa Pay how to sew the blanket applique or buttonhole stitch and that will show you exactly how to do that so I'm going to work each of those edges with my brown thread so you can see there I've done my blanket applique stitching there line all those pieces and I'm using an extra strong upholstery thread you can use embroidery thread if you like if you are I would use two strands also some clear craft glue and that's about it so we'll get started we're going to start with our body today so we take our first full body piece a fusible web paper has been peeled off there and you're just going to fuse that piece on with a hot iron and protective cloth you can see that that lines up beautifully there so that will indicate her front legs and then straight over the top of that you pop the little chest piece in and fuse that one on and then we'll come back and do the sewing so my pieces body pieces are fused on nicely now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to on my machine I'm going to thread my machine up in a in a dark brown thread and I'm going to sew a straight stitching line from right in the middle of those two feet straight up until we hit the little chest piece there so two of those you'll need your front legs you'll need your chest piece which I've made lighter again you will need your muzzle piece which I've made the same color as my little chest piece you'll need your two eye circles these all have fusible web all these pieces have fusible web applied and also you'll need your two ear inserts I'm going to be using today something I never would normally use we generally stay away from them in the professional uh, plush industry but these crystal eyes, crystal craft eyes they're safety eyes usually used in uh, children's toys because they don't come adrift they actually can look really really good if they're used in the right way and I think today this project is going to really um, make the best of them if you can't find these, these are 20 mil um, if you can't find any of these or perhaps you just don't want to use these sorts of eyes you can substitute a nice big brown button and add a little black tiny button for the center 